Production, Season 2, Episode 13, the finale now. This is Part 7. Oh, ho And we've got, uh, we've got a ways to go. So <laughs> let's keep moving. We're like still in Act 3 of the first hour. Because so, we wasted the first half hour talking about nothing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure it was my fault. Pretty sure. Now, now that we have Brett in here, he'll keep us on task. Of course he will. We should rely on me for that or not, but I'll try. Until I <laughs> All right. I don't so trust men to do recap, anything. So sorry, Brett. To quickly recap what we've got in Act 3 here so that I write it down. Yes. Um, so, what, so the elves arrive. At the fight of the dying trees. Um, I think the basically, are, well, oh, I was going to say something that I never got to say because okay. I, I see Lord Marie as is as is correct. Um, <laughs> I think I think Feanor can make some overtures, but I basically think that nothing he does of, amounts to anything. Um, I I kind of want. This is this is the moment where Fingolfin says his piece about like you know this is your fault, right? Basically, yeah. Um, I think Fingolfin should be the more active personality here. Uh, he should be displaying his fitness to be king over Feanor already, um, because this is sort of the this is one of the only moments where we're gonna get them before Feanor goes off the deep end. And I would like it to sort of be clear that even if all was as it should have been, Feanor's not really a king. Yes. Um, yeah. And I, and I think that's a key component of his personality, that even if he hadn't fallen, Fingolfin is a better king than Feanor would have been. Yes. Because yeah. he's just... I mean, the, they're, they're, the, the skill sets that they have as people are just different. Um, so we we have a scene earlier where Feanor is reacting to being banished by disappearing into a forge and making a really fancy lot of yeah, us. Exactly. Kind of calls him on it saying, is this really the most important thing to be doing right now? Yeah. So I think Feanor re reacts to being upset like that. So yeah. seeing him get upset and just jump right into, oh, let me do this thing. Let me do this thing. Right. And, and it's Finn Golfin who's like addressing the situation. So I think that's yeah. unfair. Well, he's addressing yeah. the politics. He's he's addressing the, the yeah. the, um. Because I I think I think, interestingly enough, I think the Valar are as equally in, absorbed by what is going on with the trees as Feanor is, and in this respect, Feanor is behaving more like a Valar than, uh, mm. like a Valar. Excuse me. Mm. Uh than Fingolfin really is. But Fingolfin is, you know, he's, he's displaying the, the, the qualities that make him a good leader. They're, they're misdirected because he's, he, like I said, he's kind of spitting Feanor's words at them. So yes. maybe, have, maybe have Fingolfin and Manway having this conversation. Well, he, Manway... he calls their attention because Manway is just as absorbed in the trees as, as you know, the rest of our, our Valar are. And then, and, and Fingolfin is not looking for someone to blame exactly, but he's like, well, okay, so what are we going to do about it besides just sit here and, and, and not, and trees. fail to help the trees, right? Like, right. um, yeah, he's, he wants to know what the next step is. And, right. and so he but calls we, Manway's we already, attention. Yes, but Manway, like, Here's the thing. Like, do we really think that Fingolfin is a better king than Manway? Well, no, because he, he's, he's yeah. better suited to be king, but he's not a better king, right? He, what he's doing in this moment better is not, king is than not a good thing for a king to be doing. He's he's right. actually sowing discord among the parties, right? Yeah. Right. Fingolfin is speaking out of anger and accusing Manway, king of all Arda, of doing the wrong thing. And is so after Fingolfin is out of Fingolfin is out of line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the whole better king thing. No, I don't think anyone is going to have the takeaway of right. Fingolfin should rule the world after seeing the scene. <laughs> right. um, yeah. Well, that's, that's why I want to. I want to definitely avoid that. But he he is behaving in a more 
king appropriate fashion than Feanor is it Feanor is being a craftsman no, I'm not I'm not making a comparison between Fingolfin and Feanor I can buy that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making a comparison between Fingolfin and Manway No he he wants revenge he's 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 how are we going to avenge ourselves upon this upon this upon this um criminal which you have yeah this, yeah. this yeah he's all accusation and stuff but he is at least saying what are we going to do about this which what is, is appropriate to that then yeah. Well, we are doing something about it. <laughs> actually, right. Actually, well, Manway should be like, actually, the more important thing here is is not your petty revenge. It's it's making sure that the trees are safe. Right. Uh, he should he should kind of put him in his place and be like, look, I mean, I, I'm yeah. I, I, too, am feel the, the sting of loss. But right. Right. Get your priorities in order. That's that's not what's important. Yeah. yeah, and and Ma- and Manway can say something to the effect of that you know justice will be done in due course. Yeah, yeah. Which it's it just will. that Manway has a very long term. Yeah. Well, even right. if right. it can be, if you can be said to have a longer term view than an immortal elf, then certainly I think the only people who fit the bill would be the Valar, right? Yeah. Right. And yeah, Mandos has been pretty quiet up to this point, and mm-hmm. he's gonna get a line later on. Um, mm-hmm. He's not a very talkative guy. Do we want him to be unusually talkative in this episode, where he just has lines here and there throughout the episode? It would certainly uh, be a subtle nod that he is, you know, deeply affected by the loss of the trees. Mm. It, it would not necessarily be easy to read it that way, but it could be spun that way for sure. Mm. Um, just because well, if we're going to make him say anything other than his book line, we have to think about right. it. What yeah. up to. I, I, for some reason, I just had this, this hilarious, it's, it, um, I have no intention of putting this in here, this hilarious <laughs> idea of, like, Mandos almost never says anything, but the Valor are always talking about how Mandos never shuts up. Kind of like <laughs> Morin from Deep Space Nine. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. It's not. It's not funny enough to put in this, but it would be hilarious. It, it would put it in the Flash cartoon. <laughs> it goes in the flash cartoon yeah that's that's one for that because there is um a simpsons episode where everyone's grown up like the kids have all grown up mm-hmm. and maggie's the little baby right so yeah. she obviously doesn't talk right. so homer is on the phone with her and says something like ah, that girl never shuts up and hangs yeah. up the phone. Yeah. and it's this yeah you've never heard her voice because yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. there's times when that line is funny but yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. funny yeah this should not be one of those times um, it's funny because I made I made a similar joke about uh, Orme having a so that's what that feels like line when <laughs> Mando shows up, you know, and they didn't and they didn't see him or hear him coming, and yeah. Marie was the only one in that session with me, and it it just like she no sold that joke so hard. <laughs> I was so sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like, yeah, let's not do that. I was like, I <laughs> Today, the part of Brian will be played by Marie. <laughs> well, usually, if Karita is around, we can save the dumb jokes by turning them into something that fits. But without yeah. Karita, I'm too literal to do that. So yeah. I can't save a joke on my own. I apologize. You hear that, Karita? Wherever yeah. you happen to be. Are you coming? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> said you were going to be here. What's this? <gasps> is that Karina? She defeated me. <laughs> this is she not might be watching happening. <laughs> this happens all the time. It's really terrifying. Yeah, it's actually this kind is of what scary. happens when you talk about people. Are you, sh- are you sure that that, uh, that, uh, that view counter is not, uh, is not a couple hours behind? Because it happened last time I was on too, where I was talking smack about somebody, and then it was like, "Oh, they just emailed me." Oh well. It was uh, uh, Alex. We hadn't heard oops. from him in a while, and everyone was yeah. like, "Yeah, we haven't heard from him." And I'm like, "Oh, I just got a message from him." Yeah. Like, and so I yeah got to pass on his like, "I'll join you guys again as soon as my life is less crazy." <laughs> Which thing, yeah. that's a poor excuse. All of our lives are disasters, and we're still here. So I, I think he like bought a house that doesn't have internet. Ooh, that, mm. that's yeah. less that's less of a disaster and more of a bad decision. <laughs> I, I could be wrong about that. I don't recall the details, but something like I have some housing stuff that just changed and I have some email issues that haven't got sorted out yet. So 
I can't do that. <laughs> right. Well, the 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 reason that it was scary last time, the last couple of times, was because we weren't even broadcasting at the time. There's a possibility that Karita could be watching right yeah. now. That's that's within the realm of possibility. Karita. Right. Well, if so, she needs to get on here because we need her yeah. to save your clothes. Well, no, I just told her that we're not even halfway done, and she said, "Oh, gee." <laughs> <laughs> well, if she's bu- if she's not busy. Yeah, tell her she's got nothing better to do tonight. We are yeah. totally up for her input. Well, she, apparently, they they was they w- ended up going to a party, birthday party last minute. There was homemade cheesecake. She was weak. <sighs> oh no! I, can I think see she, I think she can be forgiven for homemade cheesecake. Cool. Yeah. But if she gets home from the party, she needs to show up because <laughs> we'll still well, be yeah. going. <laughs> Ever get a snuggie and some hot chocolate and let's do this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> take take some extra homemade cheesecake. Oh. Put some coffee in the hot chocolate. Put some uh, Bailey's in the hot chocolate. It'll be it'll be a party. Just throw all yep. the things in the hot chocolate, and who knows what will happen? It can be crazy. Yeah, my 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 tea has uh, honey and bourbon in it, so you know. There you go. Okay, she just said, Damn, "Um, I'm kind of torn." What's going on? She said, "Um, I'm kind of torn. I've got a pretty early morning because I'm helping out at church." And I responded with, "Mongolian is missing your input." Yeah. <laughs> you're evil. You're Who's evil. more important, Jesus or Angolian? Make this decision now. You have no uh, time to think. Uh, <laughs> I just watched Silence today, so I know the correct answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, now Jesus will be there in the morning. Angolian only like, shows up like, once in a season. Silence, didn't she? Hmm? So when you earlier said, Oh, I just saw a movie today, before you said it, I was like, Oh, she wanted to see silence, didn't she? Yes. Um, anyway, I was thinking going back to the uh, going back to the actual thing we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I was thinking one thing that would be cool throughout this scene is to start off. I mean, you start off even with less light than normal, but over time, well, almost at this so point, it's twilight. So slow yeah. that you don't notice unless you know, except for when you look. Yeah, like, we did we did that at the beginning of the episode. What's like that? the attack happens at the very beginning of the episode, and the light yeah. doesn't. We don't actually get anything blocked out until Angolian starts to to swell. Yeah. So you the, the first like ten to fifteen minutes are are quite subtle. Like we're gonna do things with the we're gonna yeah. have the, the lighting people do things with lights as they do. Yes. Um, but but also, um, even, like change the quality of the light. Like I, yeah. like until the trees die just completely just keep ratcheting it down slowly so that like by this point yeah. people should be should have noticed that the light well you can see stars again looking. like it doesn't like, have to be it's like that great dark scene in, uh, the force but... awakens um you remember that scene where they're in uh i would not call that subtle no 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 but they had less time in that yeah scene. like they yeah, had to was... go but it was basically but yes i, I know what you're talking about it was a very effective use of light yeah. um yeah, uh, but at at this stage, we it we it's twilight. We can we can see stars again. Yes. Um, outside of this area, it's actually quite dark because it is surrounded by Ungoliant's webs at this point. So yes. the the light is not dead. It's just that it's blocked, but it is dying. Yes. Um. So yeah, so you're you're on the right they, track. How are they going to dispel the unlight? Have we figured that out yet, Barda? Um, okay. Barda is good at it, and um, Yanwei's sword does cut through it if he tries really hard. Okay, but I mean, like, it does it fade eventually? Like when the well, trees? Yeah, it, well, it, it, it will. At some point, they have to come out of there. Probably when the trees are dead. Yeah. Is the unlight going to still be there, or will it? Have- I would be very, yeah. very happy if the unlight in certain, not not like in places like Valmar and stuff, but if there, if like not all of the unlight was actually eradicated until the rising of the sun, I would be totally fine with that. that would be cool. Yeah, it just stick around. It's yeah, it's, but, well, it's I mean, stuff that Angolian has spewed out from her, yeah. so it's not connected to the light of the trees anymore. So yeah. even if the trees die, the unlight should stick around. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm just saying the the big bit that they had to cut through to get to the trees mm-hmm. that's you know surrounding the trees they're gonna have to they, either do something with that or it'll have to fade away well they, i, I think it could be part of in. a cleanup effort what's that there should be like a cleanup effort to actually yeah. make the spaces how do, they get out, how do they get out of the of that area will it be, 
because they had trouble getting in. Yeah. So yeah. Well, are they going to have trouble getting out? Yes. Well, they have to if, have if they want to progress their, to the north. Yeah. their way out, it's just, it just takes a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's a, it so, is a laborious process. Okay. Yeah. I'm, but I'm they've fine. got lots of helpers now because, like, it's all the Valar, exactly. there's all the Maiar, the elves have all shown up. Like, and I would be comfortable doing something. I don't think we have to show this per se, but like, if they have, you know, the little lanterns, um, and if they try to cut it with a regular knife, it doesn't work. But if they have the little Feanorian lanterns, if basically if they up expose it to light, it becomes more cuttable than if it was just. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, something to make it visually so the difficulty right. and then how yeah, they overcome it. Here's That's something yeah. that we need to that we need to see. Like we need to see that Feanor has kind of done everything in his obviously relatively limited power right. to, to help. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we need that if we're going to sell if we're going to sell the idea, you know, the question Will you give up the Simrils as mm -hmm. essentially a cliffhanger? Yeah. Um, for the, for would, the midpoint of this two part episode. That I, I would kind of like it if the words that the trees can't be saved actually comes from Feanor. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. No, he's, I wouldn't say that he's the final word on it, but he kind of has the realization and just says it out loud. And Yavanna is just kind of being private about it. But um, yeah. 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 So if he, because if he makes the realization, like he he kind of has to be the one who makes the next step leap, of mm -hmm. like, oh, then what are we gonna do, right? Um, yeah. And and I would love for him to admit defeat, basically. Yeah. Well, because it's something he really that, never does. I would <laughs> like to see him almost kind of frantic, get, like growing almost kind of frantic about this. I'll tell because that's gonna like we've never seen this from him before. Yes. I don't know. Frantic is not just just not. You know what he's never I been is awestruck, concerned. and this is a moment where I think he should be awestruck rather than frantic and like. I don't think he's you know I don't think he's humbled by this realization because it's not his thing, right? Well, I'm not necessarily humbled. Humbled is the wrong word. He's he he's awestruck by the fact that this is this is something that could happen and that there's nothing he can do about it. Does he that's... like collapse when he says the line? Like, does he like fall to his knees and say? No, I think he, he stands up. I think he stands okay. up. Um, I think yeah. he's been on his knees kind of doing the best he can with the tools that he has available to him and, and he stands up and is like I I don't know what to do that, and he can frame it that way he can, yeah. he can say yeah. I, I don't know what to do uh, yeah. Yeah. and actually have to look up at the Valar and see what they see yeah, it's out of his hands he, yeah. it's, he, it's out of his hands and and that's yeah. more It's he's, he's not he is realizing it for himself, but he's basically telling his people that because yeah. the Valar know that there's nothing he can do. Right. Um, the only thing that he can do is give up the Silmarils. That's it. That he can make a yeah. sacrifice. That's all he can do. And yeah. they know that because they're mythological beings. So if and... we do that. If we do that at the end of this, uh, of this scene and he says, you know, I I have done all you I can do, or I you know there's nothing else I can do, you know. If he, if there's, he no, not, that, there's nothing else. There's nothing I can do. Yes, yes. There's yeah. nothing unequivocally. I can do. There's nothing he can do. Right. If we, if that's the end of the scene, we can actually have Mando say, "Not nothing." Yeah. <laughs> there is you know. Oh oh oh! That's so good. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Not not nothing. Yes. Oh my God. How Mendocian. Yes. Mendocian. <laughs> that's really because good. The, next time, like the that. next time that we see them is going to be when they ask him for the Simrils. This 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 moment that we just had right here is what I envisioned when I came up with the idea of the round tables. This is exactly like somebody says something smart and then somebody says something smarter and then we all <laughs> hug and pat ourselves <laughs> on the back for being so damn smart. It is a lot of fun to write lines for Mandy. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it's everybody really, has, it's, it's fun fun. everybody's fun in different ways. Everybody is really exciting and fun to do in different ways. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. enough to make a person want to go into TV for real. Yeah. <laughs> 
but uh, I like <laughs> money. So. Our, uh, unpaid side job. <laughs> I like money, so I, I uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, <laughs> I like is the bigger That's issue important down here, Bob. <laughs> I, I like a steady paycheck. Steady paychecks are great. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't had a steady pace. So there's before. nothing holding you back. Go for it. <laughs> I, I'm really sorry, Nick. I should have slipped up. <laughs> that's that's but right. I do, uh, I do hope your new job works out well. Yeah, me too. Well, and and hopefully it's not a steady paycheck. Hopefully it's an ever increasing paycheck. That's that's also yes. a good thing. Agreed. That's, okay. that's one of the beautiful parts about this sort of thing. All right. The, the, so, the, well, that's how they hook you. Yeah. It, well, it, and sometimes it works. Um, if you're good at it. Yeah. Which obviously I'm good at it. Of course. You're yes. good at obviously, I'm a much better salesman than I am. Yeah. But I'm also one of the worst salesmen I've ever met. So. <laughs> I, I could give you a run for my money. I'm I'm a fantastic salesman as long as I actually like what I'm selling. Why is my dog barking? What time is it? Is your wife home? No, I don't think so. She just left. Anyway, um, let me check. Oh, right. we got 45 seconds left on this session. So why don't we take a break real quick? Yeah. If you're watching us live, uh, hang on. Let me see what's going on, and we'll be right back. If you're watching this in the future, definitely like and share the videos. If you like and want to share them, definitely subscribe if you haven't yet. And check out the links below for info on all kinds of great stuff, including this move forward taking place June 1st to the 4th. Be there. See you in a minute. We'll be here.